Rebuilding a model steam plant. This is part 36. Threading the twin steam turret supports and starting to make some decorative parts to improve the appearance of the columns. This clip shows the nearly completed turret. It just needs a pair of legs to stand on. As shown in the previous episode, temporarily the turret is supported on some PM Research brass tubing. And in this clip I'm checking the size of it. According to my digital caliper, it is a quarter of an inch in diameter. I really don't want the turret to sit on tubing, so I've cut two solid pieces of brass the same length as the tubes. Over now to my Boxford lathe for the first of a few machining sequences. This clip shows me facing across the end of one of the pieces of brass bar. This particular video is going to be split into two parts. And this first part contains all the routine stuff. The facing, drilling and threading of the uprights. Straight away I'm going to show you something interesting. When I face across the end with this carbide tip tool, it's fine until I pull the tool back and then I get rings on the work. This doesn't always happen with some cutting tools, but this negative rake tool tends to leave rings in the work, as you can see here, when I pull it backwards. I'm not too worried, to be honest, about the overall finish of the ends of these bars because some more work is going to be required on them. It would have been much better, instead of pulling the tool backwards across the work, just to move it away first. The drilling and tapping operation starts by using a centre drill to make a depression in the end of the work as a guide for the main twist drill. This clip shows me drilling a hole in the centre of the work using a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter drill. Why 5 30 seconds? Well, it's because it's tapping size for 2BA. Because this needs to be threaded 2BA to take a bolt from underneath the baseboard. After drilling, I'm threading the hole 2BA. I'm using a 2BA spiral tap. These function a little bit like a twist drill and clear the swarf a bit better. To slow the lathe down, I'm running it in back gear. First of all in a forward direction and then in a reverse direction to withdraw the tap. One down and one to go. Here's the chuck with nothing in it and here's the chuck fitted with this second rod. This time the video is running faster just to get through the job a bit quicker and I'm doing exactly the same as I did with the first rod, drilling it and threading it. For some reason this spiral tap tends to cut the thread a little bit undersized. I don't know why that is, but then again I don't know where this tap came from, it could be worn. So when this job is finally finished I will re-thread it using a standard plug tap. To cut the thread on the outside, which is quarter by 40 threads per inch, I'm using my tailstock die holder. I want to show you something important here. I'm threading under power. The lathe is in back gear and it's very powerful. I always use the open part of my hand on the handle of the die holder, depending on which way the work is rotating. By doing this, if the die holder should grab, the handle will be pulled out of my hands causing no injury whatsoever. As I reverse the direction of the work, I use my other hand, and if for any reason the die holder grabs, it pulls the handle out of my fingers. A bit of health and safety thinking can save a lot of problems. This next clip shows the threaded parts of the uprights. Nice clean threads, but the ends are a bit raggy. More about this in the next episode. Now I've turned the parts around in the chuck and in exactly the same way I'm threading the other end. This particular clip shows me withdrawing the die holder from the work. After cutting the threads on the other end of the piece of bar, I would just like to mention that the length of the thread has been cut longer than required on purpose. All will be revealed in the next episode. Now it's time for a clean up of the two brass rods. First of all, using a piece of 180 grit emery cloth followed by some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper. I don't want these columns to be polished, I just want them to be clean. I loosely fitted a couple of 2BA brass bolts with which I will fasten the completed turret to the baseboard. I fitted the outer part of the bottom end of these two rods for a purpose. With both of the rods fully screwed into the turret, 
You can see also at this end it's quite a lot of quarter by 40 thread showing. I'm not going to leave it on a cliffhanger, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in the next episode. First of all, a centre drill a piece of brass, then a drill it tapping size for quarter by 40 all the way through, which is 7 30 seconds of an inch. At this stage I haven't threaded the piece of bar, it just looks that way because the drill has left some rings in it. As usual, I'm going to face across the end. I'm using the carbide tipped negative rake tool, which gives a great finish this way and a terrible finish this way. Although, because this is a much thicker, more rigid piece of brass, it's not as bad as it was when I faced the end of the uprights. I need to make two specially shaped fittings for the bottom part of the upright column. So I'm using a round nose tool and I'm doing it this way. If I was a proper engineer and I had a longer piece of brass and if I was working in industry where time is money instead of in my home workshop where it is less so, I would not be doing the job as I'm showing here. These are tutorial videos, that's why I show the rings in the work and I show what not to do and how to do things and it seems to be a good way of making it simple. After turning the piece of brass to the shape that I need it to be, I thread the hole down the centre. Once again, quarter by 40 threads per inch. Now it's time to part off the finished component. I'm turning this part completely freehand. The hole down the middle is quarter by 40 threads per inch. But the rest of the measurements are just totally unknown. I just looked at the part and when it looked right, it was right. In the next episode, I will discuss tool setup when you want to duplicate parts that you've already made which are not turned to any known dimensions. Another way to do this would have been to turn the part round in the chuck, keep the original round nose tool setting and turn the other end the same. But for this tutorial, I decided to do it this way. And that is it for this episode. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.